So the title is a little clickbaity. Yes, the California fire, specifically in this case, the Creek Fire up in Mammoth, cut our vacation short by about a day and a half. However, that's not the main concern here. Screw my vacation, I can go back at some point in the future. Obviously the concern is the California wildfires. And there's a lot to discuss here, that's not the point of this video, though I am leaving links in the description if you can and want to donate to certain foundations that are helping with the fires going on right now. With that said, we're cutting into the B-roll and I am gonna be talking about every single place that we visited in the day and a half that we were there, as well as some tips for you, some other places to check out and some hikes that you should do if you're gonna to go to Mammoth. Uh, I didn't get the chance to do because again, our trip is cut short, but we'll definitely be back uh, and we'll do hopefully pretty soon. So stay tuned.
All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As you saw in that video, towards the very end of it, the skies were orange and it was hazy and ash was falling. It was just not enjoyable. Cut the trip, came back home, back to San Diego. But as I mentioned earlier, let's start with just every place that we managed to visit while we were there. So at the beginning of the video, you saw Condic Lake. And this is one of my favorite lakes to go visit and photograph. It's beautiful, it's pretty big, but you can actually hike around it. Now, I have not hiked around it, but if you look on all trails, you can find some hiking trails. The awesome thing about this lake is that it's basically a resort. So you can go and you can kayak, you can paddleboard, you can bring your dogs, you can set up a picnic on the side, you can do horseback weddings. I mean, there's so much to do at this lake. It's so peaceful, so clear. And this is one of the more recognizable lakes because of the rocks that are in the lake. Whether you're going in the summer or in the winter, this is also an awesome place to do some night photography. I've taken one of my favorite astrophotography shots here and uh, overall just a great place to stop hang out for a couple hours relax by the lake and then head on to Mammoth. so after this we went into mammoth we found a local park we had some food to go set up the canopy to be in the shade it was the weather was really lovely we had an awesome time checked into the hotel got some food everything you need to do and then later on the day we went to go check out emerald trail emerald trail is a video that i made specifically and i uploaded last week on the youtube channel that video covers everything you need to know about where to park tips about the trail everything around the trail so i'm not going to spend too much time talking about it here if you want to learn about that trail go click on that video hopefully i can link it somewhere here now on the way to emerald lake trail and also when you leave, there's a big, big lake called Twin Lakes. And this is also one of my favorites to go check out in the winter time. I, I think I just like all lakes around winter time. Twin Lakes has really nice sort of composition for photographers on uh, many different angles. And, and you can also hike, there's actually a paved road. You can take your uh, bicycle, a stroller, whatever it is, and just walk for a very, very long time around the lake. It's a beautiful lake, I'll show it here. And this is when we started to get those orange skies coming through. And this was probably around 6 p.m. At this point I thought, oh man, maybe there's a fire pretty far away, this, this won't be too bad. And then in the afternoon we got home, I went to go walk and get some food. I mean, there was ash flakes hitting my eyes. It sucked, it burned, it was, it was absolutely terrible. Now the next morning we woke up and the, the video I'm showing here is first thing we saw outside and it was just dark gloomy and orange and it's you know it just reeked like a bonfire we figured maybe if we headed up north which was our plan anyway to go check out june lake we could kind of get away from this a little bit we headed up there and it was a little less orange but it was still super overcast you still got that smell there was still some ash falling and the nice thing about june lake it's it's a little town village resort type of place so there's cabins there's food everything you need it's pretty secluded so it's a nice way to disconnect and June Lake actually has a beach to it. So it's not like Convict Lake where you can kind of just find a spot. This actually has sort of a little sand beach setup where you can, you know, bring your stuff like you would at the beach. There's a lot to check out here. You can spend a full day or two here if you want. There's also a lot of camping done. I'll talk a little bit more about June Lake in a tiny little bit. So because of that, those are really the only places I was able to visit, photograph. So let's talk a little bit about some tips and places you can consider to visit the next time you head up here, as well as provide you a little bit more information on some of these places that I've already talked about. So if you're going to Mammoth, coming from the south side, you should consider stopping in Bishop. Bishop is about a 45 minute drive to Mammoth, great place to refuel, grab some food, whatever it is you need to do. One of my favorite places, as well as many people, uh, to visit in Bishop is Schatz Bakery. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but you'll notice if you go midday, there will be a line out the door. Eric Schatz Bakery is delicious. There's so many things you can imagine in there. It's like a candy shop, bakery shop, food shop. There's so many things in Bishop, would definitely recommend. Now, one of the things that's on my list and I haven't done yet is actually hike in Bishop. There are actually some beautiful hikes within Bishop itself and it's something that I hope to cover in, in the future. As I mentioned earlier, if you're at Mammoth and want to go north a little bit, June Lake is only about a 25 minute drive and I'll just read straight from the description on their website here. Along the southernmost rim of the Mono Basin, California State Route 158 loops around the US Highway 395 for 16 miles and then returns. It follows a horseshoe shaped canyon containing four lakes surrounded by a dramatic mountainous backdrop. Within this canyon, among the lakes and streams, exists a modest yet full service community available to vacationers in all four seasons of the year. Now, if you wanna go even further than that, you can drive about 20 minutes north and hit up Mono Lake. Same deal, I'm just gonna read from their website here. At least 760,000 years old and probably one to three million years old among the oldest lakes in North America. The most unusual feature of Mono Lake are its dramatic tufa towers emerging from the surface. These rock towers form when underwater springs rich in calcium mix 
with the waters of the lake, which are rich in carbonates. The resultant reactions form limestone. So Mono Lake is also right where the 120 is, which is the road to Yosemite. So if you're taking a long trip, you can also stay in Mammoth and then spend a few days in Yosemite to get back to Mammoth. Now, real quick, the tufas in Mono Lake make for great photography. The reflection on that lake is amazing, and there are certain spots that you can kind of drive on dirt to get. The tufas are bigger, but if you check even on Instagram, sort of the, the geotag, there is some beautiful photography at this lake, especially at nighttime. Now, I won't go on and on, so I'll end this with a few tips and a few places that I was planning on visiting, but did not get the chance to. And if you can, you should. Devil's Post Pile National Monument and Rainbow Falls. Hot Creek Geological Site. I have photos of this, both in the snow and snow melting on my website. Absolutely beautiful. You should definitely go check it out. So this place is basically where steaming hot water and geysers emerge from below the Earth's surface. And there are certain parts where you can get in at your own risk, and there are certain parts where it's too hot. So I wouldn't recommend getting in, but if you're adventurous, by all means. There are plenty of hot springs in Mammoth for your beautiful Instagram pictures. Come on, it's overdone. It's overdone. You can also pay to ride the scenic gondola up and down, or you can pay to go up and then hike your way down, which is anywhere from five to seven miles, depending on some of the trails you're taking. With that said, guys, make sure you check out my website, www.beautyiswild.com travel, or just go to the homepage, click on travel. Scroll down, you'll find the mountain section. You'll see photos of skiing on the mountain. McCoy Station, grab a beer there next time you're skiing. Absolutely wonderful. The Hot Creek Geological Site, Convict Lake, sort of around Mammoth, June Lake, Mono Lake, the Emerald Lake Trail, and Twin Lakes. If you stuck around this long, really appreciate it. Drop a comment below if you have any questions, concerns, whatever's on your mind. Make sure you check out my Instagram at instagram.com slash beauty is wild with two eyes and the YouTube channel where you're hopefully watching this video <laughs> at youtube.com slash beauty is wild with two eyes. I'll see you guys soon.